Hey, John. How are you doing? You okay? Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Um, I've got a deal for you. Do you want a deal? Do you want a really good deal? I've got yeah. a really good deal for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hit okay, me with so, it. So, five hundred links, fifty dollars. How's that? Do a thousand for twenty-five, and we got a deal. <laughs> well, you got a deal. <laughs> Uh, dear, we're going to talk about backlinks because kind of like that sort of happened, didn't it? I mean, and it still happens. I mean, I still get the emails wanting to sell me backlinks and, and things. And I, it still goes on, doesn't it? Even even today, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, my email is inundated with offers for you can get on this site, you know, look at this traffic, look at all these different things that are, you know, I can do for you. Don't worry, I'll give you a great deal. Um, and they, 20, 30 a day. That's what I get. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So I'll tell you what, um, let me give you 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Tell everybody who you are, what you do, about starting kind of now. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Matt Harrison. Um, I am the vice president of global operations over at Nextnet Media. Um, we own multiple different brands and multiple different businesses, but I like to focus in on authority builders. So authority builders is one of the brands um, under my responsibility and we handle backlinking, guest posting, link insertions, citations. What we do, um, we take a lot of pride in, is we work on really, really great relationships with publishers to make sure that our clients end up with niche relevant backlinks that actually help them versus hurt them. So what we kind of described earlier was a little bit more about, I can get you as many backlinks as you need. I know a guy, hey, He's right behind this area over here. Like, don't worry, we'll talk about it. Slide a little bit of cash and all that. Gone are the days where I think that that has a whole lot of value. Most clients right now are coming into a space where they already know who their competitors are. And so there's a rubric that they can already look at and find out what are the backlinks that I have? What does my competitor have? But on top of that, we should also be looking at the content on our websites that talk about, am I providing value to the end client? If somebody is searching for a specific phrase, there is an intent behind it. We have to unravel what that intent is and then figure out how to best signal our answer to Google to serve that directly to the client at that time. Backlinks only one piece of the equation. Really comes down to content and then the optimization of the site itself that gives people that next step that they need. No, I was going to say, you mentioned authority right at the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah. And and that's that's a kind of a big deal for Google yeah. at the moment. They, they are trying to kind of like figure out who's got the authoritative voice in, in the market. Um, do backlinks still play a huge role in generating that authority, do you think? Yeah. So still a factor. Short answer is yes. Um, it gets a little bit murkier past that point. Um, it really has to do with the competitive, competitiveness of the space that you're specifically trying to get into. And then if you yourself can already determine who your competitors are um, and whether or not you need to play catch up or stay ahead, that kind of determines what value backlinks are going to have for you. Um, we run into oftentimes with customers who come in and they have an Etsy shop and they think that their main competitor mm -hmm. is Amazon. That's a real yeah. David and Goliath story, and it doesn't always turn out yeah. the way that it does um, in the original story. But if you know who your competitors are and what you're looking at, that landscape looks a lot different. So backlinks, the best way I can sort of surmise is it's just a signal out there to Google. Who's talking about you? What is the relevance of the conversation that's taking place? If I'm running that same Etsy shop and I'm getting backlinks from third tier subdomains that are talking about every other subject under the sun other than what my Etsy shop is about has no value. If I have backlinks or I have relationships with publications that are niche relevant, that talk about what it is that I do, um, that talk about that same subject and then provide context in a way that Google see, th sees that as a signal that shows that my Etsy shop or my blog or my Shopify website is part of that conversation and can help move people into yeah. that logical direction, that's when it has value. 
Yeah. So it's still a ranking factor. We still yeah. need to worry about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are we at the point? Do you think we're still? Do you think we're at the point where you could have like a really crap website with rubbish content, loads of backlinks, and it'll work like it used to years and years ago? Or has it become a little bit more sophisticated nowadays? Oh boy, answer is yes and no. So is it more mm. sophisticated? Yes. Can it still happen? Absolutely. Um, if you mm. go on Twitter um, and you know you spend enough time, you'll find people who find websites that are ranking for. Um, terms that people actually have search intent for. And there's still a rubbish website that's up there and and has a lot of backlinks that are a part of it. I will say it's less and less frequent. So instead of it being everything like WikiHow ending up, you know, being the main website for literally everything, um, it's, it's, it's becoming less and less, but it still happens and you can still game the system. And there are tons of motivation out there to find out what's the next big thing that you can do to sort of break into that space. You know, right now there's yeah. a conversation yeah. going on with Reddit, right? Reddit is showing up for yeah. a lot of terms. Yeah. Does it provide Everywhere. the best amount of value? Eh, it's no. dubious at best. Um, and then as you say, no. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, um, I mean, uh, one thing that irritates me a little bit with the search results is the is like you mentioned the wiki how the mm-hmm. the the how we do it websites the forbes the everything i mean they write mm-hmm. articles on absolutely freaking yeah. everything that there was there was an article i was reading the other day about rolling stone magazine which has always been about music mm-hmm. and they were like got articles about um you know the best air conditioning units for your house or something mm-hmm. and it's like dude where's where's the latest album from somebody yeah um that that is a peer, to me that's spam yeah uh, uh, because I always remember doing a search for music editing software, um, sorry, uh, podcast editing software, audio editing software, and not one of the results out of the, I think it was, I counted about 20 20 results down, was from somebody who actually knew anything about audio editing, right, it was all from these pages. Mm -hmm. Is this a deliberate, is is this the backlinks working and getting these, these sites higher up the rankings? I can't say definitively, but I mean, just based on what you're kind of explaining, yeah, probably. There's still Hmm. a lot of importance that comes to do with maybe search intent isn't fully understood. I'll give you an example. So I was at a conference in November, and one of the speakers there talked about loan calculators, right? If you type in loan calculator, you're generally going to end up with an interface that shows you a loan calculator. And what his his conversation was about was how would Google know that a loan calculator is what people are looking for, right? If you're just looking at the search phrase loan calculator, you would think I need a 10,000 word article about the importance of a loan calculator and how great a loan calculator is and everything about that. It's actually the human interface that comes in with that to provide the context of the intent. So at the time of that conference, there was a group of people that will actually go through and look at websites and say, this is actually the intent someone has. And so there's a better understanding based on that traffic model of what that looks like. So I think that that has a lot to do with it. Google also has um, Google Analytics GA4 that can look and find out if somebody lands on your website, how long are they on it on average? And they have to augment what all of those things look like. I don't know if what you were searching for necessarily has the same volume. And so maybe they're not using the same Mm. key learnings. But when you look at that volume and how it pertains to how people interact with your website, I think that's when you start to see shifts in how things look. There are also other pieces of the equation, which is you may have the best website for someone to provide that information. But depending on how you have backlinked in the past, be that organically or via paid methods, where you point all of those links to also has a lot of value. So right now I'm working with a client who they have um, a website with about 120 different pages that are on there. But one page specifically, it has where all of their backlinks have gone. And this is not just paid efforts. Mm -hmm. This is other efforts like getting into directories and things like that. So you have 100 pages that are all maybe floating around 10 links and then one page that is up here with about 700. Well, Google doesn't look at that as a natural pattern. And so can't necessarily go and say, I don't want to be in these directories because it does provide some value to the people who are using that directory, but I want to have more visibility elsewhere. So what we do is we actually build all the other pages up with 
more relevant backlinks that talk about the space that they're in um, and the importance of what it is that they're doing to then start to raise that tide so that we're coming off that berm, if you will. So all of a sudden now the entire ship is floating a little bit better. People can manipulate things by having hundreds of thousands of links going to all of these different pages. Um, but I do think that when you get down to the search intent and Google has a reason to provide better metrics on that is when that's when you start to see that augmentation. Yeah. You mentioned link insertions mm -hmm. right at the beginning. What, 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 what is a link insertion? Yeah, so there's two main, we call them generally paid efforts. So there's guest posting, mm -hmm. which is when mm -hmm. you can actually do this organically. Actually, both of them can be done organically or via paid methods, yeah. um, where you would reach out to a publication via outreach and say, hey, I would love to write an article for you based on this subject and this topic, and I'll have it linked back to my website. And I can actually use my website to point something back to yours. It's considered like a link exchange. But that's something that is created at that time and will be done within, let's say, 30, 60 days that will provide value on both sides. So it's a newer link that's out there. It has to be discovered by Google in order for it to have value. A link insertion um, is generally going and finding a pre-existing article and then you can do outreach manually to someone and say, I see that you have a listicle and you've talked about four of my competitors. This competitor at the bottom is actually no longer in business. Why don't you link to mine and I will give you a blurb to add on to that. Um, and then that basically is something that has to be rediscovered or recrawled by Google. And if it's with a high authoritative website, Google's constantly crawling at all times and search tools like SEMrush and Ahrefs are doing much the same. And so they'll actually be able to pick up that page and then show it as a backlink that goes to you. But those are two main ways that people sort of look at link building yeah. right now. What, what, what's kind of the success rate when you, when you email somebody and say, look, we've found a bit of old content and some of it's out of date and here's a way you could update it. What, what, what's the success rate on that? Uh, I'd say very low. <laughs> um, if, yeah. you, if you did 1,000, maybe you'd get 10. Um, so one out of 100. Right. Um, and there's usually a lot of time. Um, most people won't just take a flyer. You generally, what they'll do is they'll actually want you to point to the actual article. They'll want you to point to exactly what you'd like to have changed. And then a little blurb about how that provides better value. And so the time, the time required, time, money, and effort required in order to do that is generally pretty high. Um, but it really kind of has to do with relationship building at the same time. If you're in an industry that's a little bit tighter knit, everybody kind of knows each other, it's easier to just say, hey, I'll do a link exchange with you and then have that conversation. But if you're sending out a flyer about, you know, to 100, 150 different, you know, places, it generally starts to fall into the same level of span that we talked about when we kicked this off. Yes. You know, I also get a lot of those yeah. emails that say, hey, I'd love to be on the Authority Builders blog, you know, to talk about X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I'll get about 50 of those every single week as well. And they have much the same uh, uh, demise archive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny you mentioned link exchanges. I used to run a website back in, oh, I don't know, early 2000s called UK Link Exchange. And it was a link exchange community where you could go on and you could find mm -hmm. people to link. And people had links pages yeah. back then, and we did it. Um, yeah, that was completely destroyed by, I think it was Google Penguin, would it yeah. have been? About 2008, 9, 10, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that was But um, reminiscing on that. Link exchanges are not really a thing now, are they? Or are uh, they? They're, they're not to that same level where you're necessarily going to have a forum mm. to discuss those things, but they still you have. have a links, you don't have a yeah. links page anymore. No, no. So you really do have to have the relevancy um, with that. So yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about because I used to run a few forums back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, where mm -hmm. you would do much the same thing and be like, these are all the partners that we have. And you just have a long list of everything. Now there really has to be a little bit more um, oomph behind it that generally comes with the content that is mm -hmm. niche relevant. But that one-to-one -one relationship where let's say I know someone else who owns another website yeah. and we have you know, a way to write towards the strength of the other person, those link exchanges still happen all the time. In fact, I still go to events where people are talking about like, hey, what's your website all about? Can we, you know, work something out where we have a link exchange? So so, so we know backlinks kind of like will help, help improve your ranking. Mm -hmm. It'll help in, improve, improve that. So are there any quick wins? Because everybody wants everything done instantly. They don't want to sit there 
doing outreach, for goodness sakes, or writing blog posts. Are there, are there any quick wins? So quick win is kind of hard. You asked probably the wrong person <laughs> about finding the quick wins. I've, I've been through enough of these where I've seen the, you know, I'm using, you know, I'm creating a thousand different articles and I'm sending to everybody I know saying, hey, do you want a link inside of this? And, you know, I'm going to buy a thousand word pack of sub DA1 links and, you know, as a signal that does all this stuff. Something that may work now that you would say is a quick win. Think about it like what you talked about with link exchanges back in the day. There's going to come a time where it just doesn't have that same value. And so yeah. you can be one of two minds about really, really quick wins, which is it's going to hurt me in the future. Or at the very best case scenario, Google just kind of stops having value in it, right? And so you kind of have to base your time based on that. I look at quick wins like, let's say doing, you know, again, a 500 pack, 250, 750, 1000 link pack. I don't think that those quick wins are valuable any longer. A backlink quick win right now is actually doing a little bit of research, finding out who your competitors are, how many backlinks they have, where they have those backlinks from, and then trying to find either through your own outreach, which again, very arduous, or through a partner like Authority Builders that can actually go and find similar websites to that, if not, those exact websites to work with. And so what we'll actually have, one strategy we'll work with for some of our higher end clients is, We'll actually take a, all of their competitors, look at all of the links that they have versus all of the links that their own website has, and then find those gaps and then find out who we have relationships with. So really what it comes down to is what's the easiest way for you to build a relationship with somebody in a meaningful way? With Authority Builders and our network, we have about 4,500 publishers that are out there and we find you niche relevant websites that make sense. For you to find that same amount of um, different publications to work with, kind of a daunting thing, but you still can do it on your own. There are ways of being able to do it. You can get together with networks that do talk about the same types of subjects. If I'm a roofer in Tampa Bay, there's probably tons of different insurance companies that would love to talk about your brand, your business, have an article that has to do with it. But I would actually say that backlinking quick wins aren't going to be as, as important as content quick wins will. And what I mean by that right. is this. Topical authority is something that's sort of happening right now where Google is looking at all of the different machinations of the keywords you want to go after and then finding the different properties that are writing content to those keywords. So if I were someone starting on a brand new website that maybe wasn't super competitive, but competitive enough where backlinks are important, I would try to write 50 articles, be it in my blog, be it in an information page, and then I would use a third-party tool like SEMrush or Hrefs, and then I would look and find out which ones are starting to gain keywords. And then look at traffic. So if you've got Google Search Console, look at the ones that are moving the needle. A quick win is gonna come from writing content, seeing the ones that are being picked up by Google, meaning it's indexed, it has keywords that are starting to pop up on it, and you're starting to see some value in the third-party tools, and then actually building backlinks to those. So now you've got 50 pieces of content. Some won't win, some will, and you build backlinks to the ones that are winning and you optimize those pages to do the things that you think are the most important. Book a call, move on to the next stage which may be buying whatever you're selling on your website. Is it a consultation? Providing that additional value that shows that intent. Because remember, getting to the website's one piece of the puzzle. Google is going to analyze based on Google Search Console, Google Analytics, are people landing on the page? Are they going to a second page? Are they trying to learn more? Or are they landing, staying for 25 seconds because you have 6,000 pop-ups and then bolting altogether? Mm -hmm. So the quick wins are really gonna come from what is the most relevant content you have that is gonna provide value to the search intent that's out there. Because as we enter into a phase of SGE and AI being a part of the conversation, it's about guessing what the customer or the end user's intent is going to be. And once you can start to unravel that a little bit more and then play with that, your quick wins and the time you spend solving for those things is gonna pay off in dividends. Yeah, yeah. It's hard, isn't it? And I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago about 
how hard it is. And it's deliberately hard because of the fact that if it was easy, we would be back in the year 2002, 3, 4, mm-hmm. 5, where everybody could do it. And everybody, it was simple. You just you just clicked your fingers and, and you had a website ranking. It, it's hard now because, is it because very few people want to do the hard? I think it's hard because there's so much noise out there. You know, right. When you're building a website, that's in itself a beast. You know, it's it's gone are the days where, you know, you took most of the skills that you learned from building something in GeoCities and then started to build your own um, HTML website or the beginning machinations of WordPress um, and most everything coming out of the box. Now with so many plugins, with so many different frameworks that exist, with so many, you know, adding in too many pop-ups that exist on your website, all of these things sort of add to the noise. And since a lot of major domains built themselves up in the mid to late 2000s, the technologies that were required then are very, very different than how our browsers view everything now. If you just go into Chrome and you look at the JavaScript tools, you'll see all of the things on your page that don't work. Google has to look at all of those things and say, okay, well, I'm not going to break your page because then I just broke the internet, but I'm going to remove these from loading or attempting to try to load them again. Some sites don't have those errors. That is probably in the single digits percentage wise of websites that exist out there. Most of the rest of them have issues and errors. And so I think that's a part of the problem as well. When Google went all in on AMP, accelerated mobile, I think it was platform. One of the challenges, whatever it was, yeah. yeah, One of the challenges was how do you take the internet as it exists today and then provide a new version of what that looks like? And if you used WordPress, you probably saw at least 50 different plugins that you could download and do that with. And each one had different ways of, of tackling that problem. Then you would, you know, starting off a brand new website, if I'm a physical therapist, and I'm just trying to provide the best value uh, to people that come to my website, I'm probably not worried too much about the fact that the image on my home screen is a gigabyte versus having it be less than 10 megabytes, right? So these are all things that sort of feed into it. So it just becomes part of the noise. And one thing that I look at when I'm building a brand new website or working with a brand new property is just, what are the quick and easy wins that you can see that streamlines the site enough that gets the point across so that Google wants to spend the money. Remember, it costs billions of dollars a month for Google to crawl the internet, and same thing with Ahrefs and SEMrush, to crawl the internet to say, these are relevant, this is part of search intent, all the rest of this stuff. And you have to make it attractive to them to want to do that in the first place. They could, you know, they could save, they could save a billion by just ignoring yeah. Reddit. Yeah, well, yes. Well, unfortunately, they also paid, I guess, Reddit an insane amount of money to be able to train their AI model on um, oh. all of the Reddit stuff, which scares me because I've been on that place for way too long. There's, a, there's another one which is quite amusing, which is completely off topic, but I'll mention it quickly. Is that there's an airline somewhere or other. I saw a screenshot the other day It's um, where, where the price was something like it was €199 Euros for a flight um, and they share your data, or it was €225 Euros for the flight mm. and we don't share your data. And that's scary, that yeah. is, because it's, it's kind of like we're now, we're, we're now paying for the privacy which we had before it all started. Yep. Yeah. It, here in, in the States, I mean, you know, we have state entities that are selling information to advertisers based on your home values, mm-hmm. your zip code, all the rest of it that, that's in there. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all over the place. And yeah. you also see like other technologies that are picking up. I mean, I, I don't know how big Uber is where you're at. I, I believe you probably you know yeah. use it or something like it. Um, but they have yeah. something called surge pricing. Well, Wendy's, a fast yeah. food restaurant, is talking about doing surge pricing for yeah. their food in the middle of the day. And it just, mm. why? Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, mad. So if we look at the genuine real side of link building, what we're, what we're doing is we're still manipulating in a way aren't we? So we're going out there, we're finding places to position ourselves, place ourselves, do things to get backlinks. Google has constantly said, um, we want the genu- we want to know what 
actual real people think of you mm -hmm. to build the authority. Where does it all sit? Is Google, is that right? Is that what Google wants? Or d does it not really matter anymore about that real, you know, genuine side of it? Yeah, I don't know what Google wants. Um, because Google mm. seems to say they want both sides of the equation, which is I only want like actual mm. relevant conversations to happen about this. Then you'll see a thread on Twitter that talks about how somebody was able to scrape somebody else's what like website, recreate all of the content using their own private blog network, build hundreds of thousands of links, and then rank number one within two weeks. Yeah, both sides of the equation are true. Um, for me, a longstanding bet is figuring out what's going to be in the middle. Um, how can you get the most niche relevant, topically relevant guest posts and link insertions that go to your website? That to me sounds like an effective use of your time, right? If I can yeah. tell you that you can spend, as we said from the outset, $25 to get a thousand um, backlinks for your website, you're paying a very, very small amount of money to get a bunch of backlinks. But that is also to make an assumption that a backlink is a backlink is a backlink is a backlink. And what we've seen over the past several years is that the quality matters. It really, really does. There are plenty of signals that are out there that will show whether or not the site that you wanna work with is actually relevant to your website. We have signals that come from third-party tools. We have signals from Google themselves that tell us that this website is about these subjects. That's where you want to be getting your backlinks from. And so working with a partner who can create a relationship or let's say facilitate a relationship between your website about this topic with the website over here that also deals in this topic, I think is a very, very important one. And when you add things on top of that, like writing content that speaks directly to the topic at hand, it becomes even more important for you to understand all of the different pieces that go into courting a website through outreach, writing content that they agree to, being able to make sure that you have your links in the right place in the right order that Google seems to have value with, making sure you have the, the proper amount of um, words in the article, that you're not overusing the keyword, that you're doing all of these other things that Google may in the future no longer have the same affinity for or look at that value. What I view as being the most important is looking at what is the intent going to be for the person that is searching for that that subject. Yeah. Um, these are even tests that I'm doing with SGE right now is I will look at learning how to wakeboard, right? Um, that is a water sport that I actually happen to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Going out there, wakeboarding, learning all the different pieces about it, I've been doing it for about 25 years. I will tell you that if I go to SGE and I ask about wakeboarding, it is trying to guess what I want my intent to be. It'll take a really, really long time for it to figure it out. But when I use SGE, I can see in the response what it's trying to guess my intent is. And generally, it's always going to end with somebody's going to need to buy, you know, a wakeboard, you know, different things that have to do with wakeboarding, or I'm going to show it a video that, that facilitates what that looks like. They're really trying to guess. And that's also the same thing that they're trying to do when it comes to any sport that's out there. Pickleball is a great example. If you type in best pickleball yeah. battle, like today, here, I will get served with probably like 100 different shops where I can buy the best pickleball paddle, right? Yeah. If you're somewhere else, it may talk about, here are the best blogs that tell you about what the best pickleball paddle is. If I go to SGE, it's going to tell me everything about pickleball that I think I need to know, and then move the conversation towards buying a pickleball paddle. If I go to OpenAI and ChatGPT and I ask about pickleball, it's going to give me a plethora of information, talk to me about all of these different things. But the conversation that I'm having with these systems is very, very different. And what Google has to ascertain is if I'm starting in Google as a whole, I want my conversation to look like this. If I go to SGE and I use that functionality or even Gemini, I'm expecting a little bit more information that now I can communicate with. And if I go to OpenAI, sure. I'm probably asking it something else completely different. Where Google yeah. has to figure out is, what's the share with Google search as it is now? What is the share going to look like with SGE? And how much is being quarantined off by OpenAI at this time? And so it's always going to come down to relevancy. 
And where I like to sort of point people to is you want your content to be used as, it wants to be cited as an example. So when you're building backlinks or you're working with publications for link insertions, think about it from that same perspective. If I'm writing a blog about pickleball and it's on a mechanics website, how is that relevant? How is that a good use exactly. of yeah. your money or your yeah. time in doing that outreach or yeah. spending any anything on it at all? Or I can go to a sports website and talk about pickleball paddles and, you know, it'll you know, point to my website that now has an authoritative article about the best pickleball paddle. I give people an option on yeah. how to buy the pickleball paddle, etc. You want it to be part of a full-throated experience, not just yeah. pickleball paddle and then 2,000 really, really poor words on it. It's all very holistic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's still very holistic, which is, which is nice in a way because you have to get a lot of things right instead of just doing one thing right, which is, I think, what it was like back in the 2000s. Um, it's been fascinating chatting with you. I could chat for ages about this, to be mm -hmm. fair. I keep getting distracted by the Arsenal flag in the background, <laughs> which yeah. is a little bit, a little bit disappointing. But oh, we, I'm sorry. We won't go into that too. <laughs> <laughs> Aston Villa are chasing you very slightly, as you probably tell by my brubby accent. No, I, that's so we actually have um, locally here in St. Petersburg, we actually have an Aston Villa um, bar. So like me and a bunch of people in my Ooh. office. So most of the other people in my office are Tottenham fans. So I'm in the minority uh, with the no. uh, with the Spurs fans. <laughs> so, but we go to the Aston Villa bar and imagine. it's like it's phenomenal, and they're having such a great a great imagine. year. Absolutely, yeah. Um, th uh, Matt, where can we find you? Where's your website? Where's your social media bits? Cool. So for me personally, uh, the best place is going to be LinkedIn. Um, I'm. You know, I'm not like you. I don't get to have just my full name there. So um, I'll give you the link to it because there's a bunch of numbers after it. Um, but for Facebook, um, if you search for Authority Builders Co., um, you'll find us for authority.builders. Um, and then our website is authority.builders. And our sales team, they're all SEO experts. And what we'd love to do is provide people with a link app analysis where you're at, where your competitors are at, and we'll tell you what the easiest wins are gonna be um, and then what it's gonna look in the long haul. And so whether or not you decide to move forward with us or not, we wanna provide you that information because if you're wasting your time trying to get a thousand backlinks for $25, um, it's probably not gonna work out the way you want. It's not, brilliant. Yeah. Matt, I'll leave some links in the show notes and folks can um, give those a quick tap okay. straight away. Um, thanks for your time, much appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much.